Okay, so this is a, a section regarding the multi-scale structure in polymer crystalline state, and this is a part B. And here I'm going to more focus on the lamella polymer domain crystalline structures, and there's how the chains are being folded, and then there is a, some uh, some regions for misfolding or some regions for the irregular structures that are coming in. So I want, I kind of uh, uh, explained this one in the previous section uh, when I talk about the lamella crystal. And this is uh, what in the, from the textbook on figure 1710. And the A is more likely the most regular, right? So with a sharp, sharp old uh, re-entry model. So this is what they call the re-entry model. The second one, B, is also the re-entry model, but you have a loose fold. So this is a, something that a little bit source for the loose, loose chain fold, and that's a source of the essentially the amorphous uh, region start to form. So there's a chain has a forming a little bit more loopy, than the making a very sharp turn in the uh, showing in the A, right? So this is a CH two CH bonding. For polyethylene, they they going going through the zigzag, going up, making a turn, going going up and down. For the polypropylene, they going the helixes, going up and down, and then making a uniform uh, straight uh, extended chain conformation. And then they are doing this, um, making a fold uh, at the surfaces lamella domain. So this is a lamella domain at a certain defined thickness, and they typically form the L knot. Uh, or, or that everyone call it. So that's a, just an L, which is a lamella thicknesses. Uh, or, or some, I think in the textbook they use a notation called a letter L with the italics. And the one that is a little bit more distinct is uh, it has actually its own name called a switchboard model, and it is a one that. What about this chain? The chain going going up. Okay, you go the chain going in, but now find not find the your nearest neighbor, but it's going going across. So this is a lot more random uh, motion compared to the other model. So then let's say this one goes in, packing itself, now finding to the ad adjacent uh, one. So this one goes up and then goes goes down, and the third one is a lot a lot more chaotic. Okay. And so they go, make a sharp turn, and then make another following this. So this one is essentially they're trying to represent a lot more uh, chaotic packing of the polymer chain. And then that's uh, what is called the switchboard model. I find another references uh, trying to highlight the switch model in the much uh, easier to understand way than the, our textbook does. So I'm just here to share you with that. This is a lot more uh, 3D, more 3D representation of re-entry model, what they call the re-entry fold with a sharp, uh, re-entry fold with a loose end, and uh, with a lot more like a switchboard model. And so as you can see that this one has a very sharp boundary and this is a ha actually has a very broad interfaces right broad interfaces between the crystalline state this is a crystalline state and this is an amorphous amorphous <laughs> surfaces so they are they are kind of having a balance between those two uh, then so this is more like amorphous, and as endo state, and also you can think about all sorts of the imperfections and the defects in the polymer lamella crystals, where you have a chain ends. So the chain ends, and also the branching point is a big one, right? So when you have a branching point, the crystal structure is a lot more not well packed and more like a loose. And this is a one the chain ends are uh, really the having a loose chain ends, and also when they're making a turn, they have a different loopy sizes or re, uh, what they call the irregular fold height, and sometimes that they make a little, little 
hiccups, right? Little bubbles, little loops in the chain uh, packing, so that that causes some defects. So the more defects that you you can have, something looks like that, and it uh, it will reduce the melting temperature of the polymers and also affects the the, the thickness of the lamella crystal. So the what is a, uh, the natural question that comes about uh, quite uh, importantly is. What about the thickness of the lamella? We all kind of know lamella, you can simply kind of draw, it look, looks like this, the chain, uh, chains are packing, right? Chains are backing like this. What will be the average size? And that we'll call L. And there are two experimental results, and then this one is showing. And so let me share that. The crystal thickness, and that is depending on the crystallization temperature. So uh, uh, how you do the crystallization, and there are first example is solution crystallized polymer crystals, and this one is polyoxymethylene, and chemical structure looks like this. In other words, we call this, this one is a polyacetal, and it's one of the polymer that is actually we are using for making some plastic gear slides, like gear uh, moving parts. The surface is a little bit slippery, and that's why the people are using it. Uh, so what they did, what you see here is this is uh, they are using the different solvents and using the polyacetal, and these are the different solvents, and that is shown up here, and then they are using the changing the uh, crystallization temperature. They they changing it, and then the, they measure the. Uh, resulting the lamella thicknesses in you know unit of angstrom. So this is a, one of the good reference points. About 100 angstrom is the lamella thicknesses. Uh, this is what I tell you, but you know, depending on the sizes or the uh, crystallization conditions, uh, you will have a different sizes. And uh, the, the higher the temperature that, that you have, uh, the slower crystallization it will be. Okay. This is a, for example, this is a temperature lower than the other temperatures, and this is a faster crystallization, and then essentially crystallization happens everywhere, and uh, you do not have a give a enough time for fully developed crystals, so thickness will be supposed to be a little high, lower. And when you go to the higher uh, uh, crystallization temperature, like here, and then uh, uh, you will have a chance to develop a, a slow uh, a well developed crystal, and so then the chain has enough time to form the uh, pack structures, and so therefore the thickness is uh, essentially pretty much well matured and the thicker crystals. And, and also, uh, if you're choosing, a, for example, the different uh, solvents, such as a uh, metacrazole, and you can, uh, the crystallization can happen. At, uh, at different temperatures, and this is a much uh, lower temperature because you cannot go up that high. I think the pr probably because of the boiling point and the other issues that are related to the viscosity, and, and then I think that's also related to. And the, it's not just the temperature, it is just also the all other uh, temperature that, that is actually what temperature that this uh, crystallization start to trigger. And then they are actually having this data into a more universal form. And uh, what they did is, uh, this is a figure B, which is a, a master curve for all the data, uh, plotted against the reciprocal of a supercooling. Right? So this is a temperature. Uh, it, it is a given, uh, in a way, 1 over super cool divide by crystallization temperature so uh, so that they they are using uh, this uh, temperature uh, at different crystallization conditions uh, to control they find out it is a matter of uh, different uh, super cooling quenching depths uh, for you to have this uh, the thickness that ranges from let's say 60 to 100 angstrom. So this is uh, particularly for a little bit more complicated stories uh, when you have this uh, polymer uh, grown from the solution. So interaction from the solution certainly plays a role and to grow the crystal and so on. 
and and uh, this is going to nice nice figures. And uh, the second example that is actually uh, more re related to the real system is this is also not so realistic because it's an isothermally crystallized from the melt state. Okay, so you have a polyethylene, you can crystallize. And uh, the melting temperature of the polyethylene is uh, ranges from the, this temperature, uh, 100 to 120. So you can you can uh, grow the uh, melt the polymers, let's say uh, 150s and so on, and then you can kind of cool it down at different uh, crystallization temperature, and you do the isothermal crystallization. So this is a temperature crystal is fixed isothermally. And you will see the impact is enormous. Okay, So if you have happened to fully melt it at certain uh, isotropic conditions and then bring it down to the crystallization and the let it crystallize at 130 degrees C, and that's the temperature for the polyethylene, and <laughs> the lamellar crystal thickness is it's essentially uh, enormous. Uh, there's a, almost like a uh, very scattered data at the temperature below. But if you go to the deeper and the deeper, and this is a, in, a, in a crystallization term, this is a deeper quenching. So to, to crystallize uh, the polymer crystals and the, your uh, lamella crystal size from the polyethylene, which is very mobile, low viscosity, uh, less friction. So you just have to, you don't have but need the time for the kind of form the spiral. You just have a zigzag, so it's very fast for crystallization. And uh, the lamella thickness is in the ranges about 200 angstroms. Okay, and but uh, beyond that, it is a very large uh, thicknesses. To actually tell you the truth, the, this is the, the data uh, done by the professor Bonnie Wunderlich, and the, he was actually faculty at RPI uh, before actually he moved uh, to the University of Tennessee. So he actually is a very big uh, uh, has a research program in the area about uh, crystalline polymers using the thermal analysis. He almost like a develop a new method of the differential scanning calorimetry when he was a faculty here. <laughs> well, anyway, this one shows that at the temperature uh, closer to the certain uh, temperature, the, you can have a developed crystal that is a really, really big. But the, uh, what is called a uh, crystal from melt, it has a little bit more complicated meaning because if you compare the scenario from the top, which is a solution crystallized polymer crystal, I can e easily imagine that this one is almost like a little sheet of polymer crystals. Right? You can have a little imperfections, but this thickness is uh, pretty much well defined. Whereas uh, from the melt, it is actually a little bit more complicated because uh, they. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about this. The, uh, structure from um, the spherulite and the lamella crystal exists within the spherulite, and it's a very uh, uh, complicated uh, structures. And what they try to f uh, argue is uh, essentially average the thickness coming from the spherulite uh, that is forming the essentially gigantic uh, 10 micron, 100 micron size structures. And what are the underlying sub unit structure? that is a lamella uh, structure that is uh, related to here. So next time, I'm going to talk about the spherulite. <laughs>